Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's third video. Yeah, let's have a look at weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's third video. Day 10 will take us to the 7th of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excel GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll try to couple weeks. Have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video. For the next uh, four weeks, that gets us well into the second half of March now and uh, I shall get over that for you in a moment. Just say that first. Video sales are 6 UK weather forecast and we've also released the Excel European out Look, check out those two bits if you'd like to do that. Like, share, subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. For gaps and weather bits. Thank you so much, everyone. Eyes are a little bit better today, uh, but uh, still a little bit uh, light and tolerant. So, uh, keeping the webcam off today. But uh, they are gradually starting to uh, settle down from the latest flare up. Thank you so much for all of your lovely messages, kindness, and support, as always. Right, let's start off with the latest wind from that from Earth and No School dot net. Showing that bringing in a proper westerly flow from off the Atlantic today. Looking for a lot of pancake. <laughs> As I say, high pressure is down towards the Azores. Low pressure is towards Greenland and Iceland. Doesn't really get much more westerly and zonal than that. Central temperature is currently sitting at 5.2, that's 1.4 degrees, but particularly one to die to average is provisional to yesterday to the 24th of February. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're well, commentary today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature actual commentary. And we're starting off below average, slightly below average with the upper air temperatures. For the next few days, two months end, then a milder uh, period through the first week of March, and then perhaps cooling back down close to average when we get into the second week of the month. Precipitation wise, looking a lot drier than it looked a few days ago. We're definitely trading towards higher pressure now through this first week of March instead of being expected Atlantic onslaught through the first week of March. Actually, actually looks like we're going to get quite a bit of high pressure. The uh, precipitation bites are pushed back now into the second week of the month. We shall see. Temperature normally in, so the next five days are coming out very close to average. That's also a change. Where did the mild spell uh, go for the end of uh, uh, February? So this case is the 2nd of March. Close to average with the temperature normally a little bit below parts of Ireland and southwestern England. Not a big deviation, though, either way. The 6 to 10 day temperature time, uh, temperature normally, uh, 6 to 10 day time frame temperature normally then starts to uh, become slightly above average. And in the 10 to 14 day temperature, Time frame that gets to 11th of March. It's near normal in the north and the west, slightly above average in the south and the east. Precipitation anomaly is for the next seven days are coming out drier than normal. So let's go through the chart. Day to end. It's our latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Friday, which of high pressure building up uh, from the southwest. Ben. And we're high and dry through the weekend, so that's going to give pleasant uh, days in the March sunshine, but it could be a bit chilly by night. And that lasts into the beginning of next week, just a little bit showery for Scotland, otherwise mostly dry for Ireland, England and Wales. Icon, again, building up some higher pressure there through the uh, weekend. And then into next week, starting to turn a little bit flatter, so a little bit more unsettled in the north, mostly dry though. Down in the south, the KMA looking like this once again. High pressure dominating the weather over the weekend and into start of next week as well. <coughs> Excuse me, gradually turns more unsettled from about day 10 onwards. But uh, before then, lots of high pressure with the KMA. That's sort of common night for March. Pretty zonal, high pressure south and low pressure is to the north there. Uh, the GFS midnight run again showing that high pressure building up from the southwest, bringing a lot of dry weather through the uh, course of next week, especially for the south, a little bit more unsettled up in the north. But uh, high pressure really sticking around from beginning to end, to be honest. And eventually, high pressure starts trying to move towards Scandinavia again <laughs> by the uh, 13th of March, and a uh, bit of a hint of an easterly. I think we shall leave that alone. But a lot of high pressure on the GFS midnight run. The GFS 6Z, uh, again, has that high pressure in the ascendancy here through the uh, first week of March. Gradually turning more unsettled, though, towards uh, days 9 and 10 with the 6 So that's slightly different to the, um, to the midnight run. A little bit more unsettled. 
Uh, and eventually a bit cooler as well with winds going into the uh, northwest. I think the models are performing absolutely abysmally up there. I'm not sure what reason that is. It could be down to uh, the expected sudden stratospheric warming event or the possible sudden stratospheric warming event that we're expecting uh, through the first week and into the second week of uh, March. That might be having an impact on, uh, on the model output. Could be, or could be something else, who knows. <laughs> well, if you enjoyed the video anyway, please keep like, share, subscribe. Thanks to everyone for dear Matt. When I drop a comment, and let us know. Think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Jazz Well, if you haven't subscribed to show to everyone for dear Matt. About 38, 37 subscribers will get us to 19.6k, uh, so if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thanks to everyone. Right, GM, again, building that high pressure in at the end of the week and into the weekend. Should be a mostly dry weekend, pleasant by day. Could be a bit chilly by day. Right, into next week again, high pressure dominating the scene through most of the week, particularly for England and Wales. A little bit more unsettled for Scotland and for Ireland. And by day 10, perhaps all turning uh, uh, unsettled with low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. But bear in mind, it was supposed to be unsettled, you know, uh, in the days before that, a few days ago. So again, the models are performing very, very poorly with this uh, high pressure. Or it's changed to high pressure. And then the ECM again building up high pressure through uh, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Lots of anticyclonic conditions. Next week looking unsettled for the far north, but mostly dry elsewhere. Also quite mild next week. Uh, that's day 10. That's a bit more unsettled by them. And the extended with the ECM actually turns really unsettled. Brings this deep low in across the country. Again, how seriously we take that, I'm not sure. Basically, it's just pushed the unsettled weather from the first week into the second week of, uh, of March. So, whether we ever get to that, <laughs> we'll wait and see. <coughs> So sorry again, everyone. Right, this is a broadcast based on the ECM run from spread.com. So, patchy rain, but it'll be a slink so mixed in, uh, coming across the country overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Then mostly dry, though, after that, with plenty of high pressure dominated through the weekend and into next week as well. Any, any rain is mostly in the far north and northwest, but south and southeast looking main dry. Some wet weather gathering in the Atlantic by day 10. And these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 7th of March. 13 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure over and to the east of the country, so mostly dry with that and pleasant winds coming in for south easterly directions so that would be pleasant by day could be a bit cool by night uh, another 13 including the control and the operational run with high pressure beginning to slip away to the east and low pressure starting to head in from the west uh 11 here with uh, low pressure coming in from off the atlantic six bow with high pressure standing its ground uh, five with low pressure dominating and then Three with high pressure over Scandinavia that could be bringing quite a chilly easterly wind. So a range of options, but most of them seem to involve high pressure now at day 10, which is a big change on, on a few days ago. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've uh, got. It gets the 12th of March, 25 members of the ECM on songs with high pressure over Scandinavia. Uh, that brings the wind in from a southerly southeast sea direction. It could be a bit chilly with that. Uh, 15 with low pressure dominating from off the Atlantic. That's to be very unsettled. That's an onslaught. Uh, 11 with high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. And we're looking flat and westerly with that to one. Um, so, who knows where we go in <laughs> two weeks' time. Uh, CFS uh, B2 meets a 500 millibar high tide breaking down into week bids. The first week bid takes us from the 25th Feb to the 3rd of March. Next week, with low pressure, similar off high pressure, though, dominates weather. CFS has had this right. I have to say that. Stop to the CFS. Remember, a few days ago, all the models were looking really unsettled for the end of February and into the uh, first week of March. They're all showing an onslaught-type pattern. The CFS stood alone and said, no, we're going to have high pressure, a lot more high pressure than any other model was showing. And I have to say, the CFS has got this right. So we give the CFS a lot of stick. I give it a lot of stick. But sometimes it does make the right call. And uh, it has done so on this occasion. So well done to the CFS. Which is something uh, I very rarely say. <laughs> Week two is the fourth to the tenth of March. Low pressure then uh, coming back in. So certainly from the north, it's more 
unsettled week three <laughs> will be the 11th to the 17th of March. Low pressure dominates from off the Atlantic. And then finally, uh, week four brings high pressure back to Scandinavia, 18th to the 24th of March. High pressure over Scandinavia. That could be started to turn the wind back into an easterly again. And then we'll just finish off with the strat. So uh, this is how the uh, latest GFS 6 f mode look in terms of stratospheric developments at 10 HPA. Blue colors are uh, cold temperatures at 10 HPA. The stratosphere over the Arctic of the North Pole, stratospheric polar vortex, essentially. Now, as we run through the next few days, here comes that expected warming, gathering pace over Russia. By the 5th of March, we've got uh, some uh, dramatic warming going on over Siberia there. And into the extended range that starts to intensify and push into the North Pole as well. So that's the 7th to the 8th of March. It looks like we've got a technical SSW going on now. I reckon that would be enough to uh, high enough temperature <clears throat> to uh, lift the uh, that, I reckon that's a high enough temperature to uh, reverse the wind, sorry, uh, to 10 HPA, 60 degrees north and there therefore be a technical sudden stratospheric warming event. Displacement of the stratospheric polar vortex down into the North Atlantic and Northern Europe. Not killing blow to it, though. Not on this particular GFS road, anyway. Um, now, that's how look as we get to the end, 13th of March. So, big warming is taking place over the pole itself in the stratosphere, with stratospheric polar vortex uh, displacing to uh, Northern Europe by that point. Where we get any further warming and, you know, a final killing blow to the uh, stratospheric polar vortex remains to be seen. But uh, I reckon that would be enough to reverse the zona wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north. Certainly a dramatic weakening of zona winds would be expected uh, from that. We shall keep you updated. And, of course, tomorrow we've got the latest installment of Stratwatch. So uh, we'll be doing that for you. I think it's episode 13 tomorrow. And that will bring you up to date with all stratospheric developments. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's say what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to your friends about gas levels. Get them to subscribe to show to everyone for doing that. Tomorrow we're gonna have a 6 a.m. broadcast. As I said, we've got episode 13, I think it is, of Strat Watch, and hopefully we'll be live at 6 p.m. We can 10 to 14 day. Uh, so uh, I shall see you for that one tomorrow, hopefully. For this one, that's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and bye for now.